this uh, multiple horse, couple of cows, maybe a bull setting has been taken over by zebras right now. Yes. <laughs> we have zebras here on the program. Mike Pereira, former head of NFL refs, now with Fox Sports, and the current head of NFL refs of the National Football League, Dean Blandino, thank you so much for coming over here. You're welcome. You don't program. shake my hand? I well, mean, you're too far away. <laughs> oh, it's Mike man. Pereira 2.0. Yes, is that what you are? You're Pereira 2.0? I taught him everything he knows. Nah, I taught him everything. Is that true, Dean? Is that true? Somewhat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Dean, uh, I mean, let me, before we, we, we move on to the, to the Super Bowl, what's going on with the investigation of, of the footballs? I just want to ask you a couple of questions about this, if that's all right. Do we know everything about the deflation rate of all the 11 of the 12 footballs? Were they all two PSI underneath, or was there some variance in that, Dean? Well, I think the investigation is still going on. I think there was variance in when the balls were tested. Okay. The balls are tested. Footballs are tested prior to every game. Right. Uh, they're gauged to be in that range, that 12 and a half to 13 and a half range. That's what happened prior to the game, and then it all played out. But right now, the reports are that every single one of the footballs that didn't measure up to standards were two PSI less than that. If you, if you can't give out the figures because there's an investigation, is there a way to just at least describe were they all of the same measurement, all 11 that were substandard? Well, I, I don't have the measurements. Okay. Uh, that's still being investigated. Uh, but I think there was some variance in, in the measurements with, with the footballs. Okay, and people are calling it a sting operation, Dean. What, 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 what can you say I, about that? Is this something that just came up during the game or something you I think you it, it came up during the game. It was something. We've, we've had football situations prior to the game come up. A ball is not a new football. It, mm -hmm. It's scuffed up in a way that, mm -hmm. that the referee just doesn't approve it. So that's, that's happened in the past, and this mm -hmm. was something that came up during the game. But they were absolutely measured before the game. Absolutely. And then during the game, something arose that caused the NFL to take an air pressure gauge to the footballs at halftime. Correct. And then there's some form of variance that to be announced. Do, do you, will, we hear, will, we, will we hear anything this week, do you think? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. How has it changed before I get to you, Pereira? I'm almost I'm, done here. I know. I, no, no, I'm I almost am done here. I feel, no, I feel like this is, a re, this is a repeat the of my Nuremberg cousin Vinny. The trial's going on No, here, it's not. Know. Come on now. I'm asking pointed questions that I think, I think they're at least fair. But um, long story short, though, um, is, is this changing the way that the NFL is handling the footballs for the Super Bowl this no, week? No, no. The, the Super Bowl, that protocol has been in place. We take control of the footballs on Friday mm -hmm. prior to the game. Uh, we keep control, and then the game officials test them about three hours prior to kickoff mm -hmm. and, uh, and then bring them out prior to kickoff. So that, that's something that has been in place. So there's really no change in the Super Bowl protocol. Why? Except there's 120 of yeah. them. There's 120 balls that are going to be in play for the Super Bowl when there's only basically 36, right, for a regular season game, 12 for each team. and. Well, not even that. Six, six, six kicking, kicking balls, balls so during 30. the regular season, then we'll have. So Bill Vinovich, the, the, the head referee, he'll, he'll have to put his check mark on 120 pieces of pigskin that's right. coming up on Sunday. That's right. And that's, what, three hours before kickoff? Yeah. Why, why isn't that the way it's done all year round? Why, is it a quarterback issue? Is it the quarterbacks went to the competition committee or they went to their owners who were on the competition committee and said, we want to be able to make sure that the footballs are to our specifications after they're made to the league specifications. Why isn't it different? Yeah, well, it used to be the home team provided all the footballs. Until and Brady and, 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 and Peyton then some got everyone together. They, I was, I was some in teams, the meeting. Sure, yeah. the, the, the visiting team wanted some control over the footballs. Hey, our, our quarterback is going to play with these footballs. We should be able to break them in. Right. We should be able to, to um, have some time with them. And, and so the competition committee okayed that. And you were in that meeting at that yeah, back in the time? Yeah, I think you were there, too, as yeah. a matter of fact, at the meeting. It was interesting because he and I were talking before he came on, too, how um, this whole notion of the referee using a gauge yes. to measure the PSI, pounds per square inch for the football. Do you know when that rule came in? No. 1954. That Is was that when right? the rule was changed that said the referee had to use a gauge to check the air pressure. So 
60 years and we finally get a deflate gate is that, is situation. It, is that, but, but Otto Graham liked the, his footballs in a certain way. Yeah, yeah I guess. But again, that, that's the whole thing is we got the, again, the helicopters flying overhead for Sunday's game, getting practice. I'm here with Dean Blandino, the current head of NFL refs and his predecessor now with Fox Sports, Mike Pereira. So why, why can't the league just basically say, we understand quarterbacks that you're on the road you want to make sure that the home team isn't messing around with the footballs busting out something slick right out of the box with the two minute drill and the game on the line we understand that but the minute that these footballs you touch them and they are marked ready for play go warm up with something else we don't care warm up with whatever you want to warm up with but when the game starts these footballs will be untouched but they are in our custody from but beginning that's what to end. they do though i mean that's what they do because once they come to the locker room they don't go back into the hands and they come to the locker room at minimum two hours and 15 minutes before kickoff right so once they get there they don't touch them anymore and I they're not they warm supposed up to. with them no they prior, don't. Uh, 10 minutes prior to kickoff yeah they'll, they'll bring the balls out and but then the ball they, boys will give them to the give them to the team but yeah. that, but that's a 10 minute give window. them to the ball boys yeah. that's 10 a 10 minute window in which the league no longer has complete custody of these footballs, correct? I mean, that's... Why? Well, they're in the hands of the ball boys, yeah. right? They're in the hands of the ball people. Doing, to, to hopefully, what they should be doing. Yeah. And at Ted Wells and, and, and Jeff Pash are going to find out if something else went down. And, that, and that's and, what I'm saying. So why can't we just get rid of even that 10 minutes, right? I mean, just well, so we don't even have this discussion anymore. I mean, why couldn't, why couldn't we listen? When this rule came in, right. it was when we were playing with one ball. If we're going to talk about what we're going to do in the future here, right. why don't we maybe change the rule? And maybe if a guy wants his ball at 10 pounds pressure, who cares? It's his ball and the other team uses their ball. Do we even have to have this rule now that each team's using their own ball? Huh. There's a lot to discuss. I only know, and I mean, I know you're the same way. We talked about this Monday. We were almost sick about talking about it last Monday. Yes, I'm sick and tired of talking about it. I think we're all sick and tired of talking about the ball thing. Well, and, as a matter of fact, I believe the uh, the United States Air Force is going to come. Well, they in have here. the ball. They're rappelling down. Yes, they have the ball. And they are going to end this discussion right now. Oh, okay. uh, Mike Pereira and Dean Blandino here. So, what did we see from the Pro Bowl last night? that you think is is something that might be ready for regular season use Dean whether so we yeah it, we tested a couple things uh, the ta sideline tablet yes. which worked out very well referee really liked the way the video looked we had one review that's something that I think the Pro Bowl it was ideal it was an ideal environment you didn't have weather you didn't have glare sure so we're gonna continue to test that so that was something that that I think the feasibility is there. So. Can we call it the Gene Sterra tablet? Can we talk about it? What can, do you think? I like that. I like that. Do you call it the Gene Sterra tablet? Yeah. When he uses it, I don't know. Uh, what about these these uh, goalposts being closer together? Vinatieri hated it. He he was he makes the Pro Bowl just to get a, have a, have a tougher gig, <laughs> which is supposed to be the yeah, other. Yeah, I don't way around, think the kickers are are going to be behind that. I think it's just something to look at the extra point and to make that a more competitive play. Right. So narrowing the goalpost, we moved them in two feet on either side. So now you have a 14 foot gap between the uprights versus 18 feet. I think we're experimenting with diff different things, moving it back. We did that during the preseason. I think that's going to be part of the off season discussion. Do you think it's anything that we've just discussed could be seen in 2015 that you're seeing your, that the groundswell, the discussions? I think hearing? I think we're going to see some change to the PAT, maybe it could be as early as 2015, but I think something's gonna gonna change. Now, Mike, I know when you were holding Dean's job, we were talking about putting a chip in the football, right? So we understand when things get, when 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 the the plane is broken. Where are we on that? Is that is that possible? I hope still where we were a long time ago. Why? Not where anywhere near it. Why? Well, because I was always the one that said, okay, fine, put a chip. Put a chip in the ball, but then you better put a chip in the knee and the elbow of the player because it depends on where the body part, when it's down, where the ball is, uh -huh. all of that stuff. I, I, I think that, you know, the one thing when we slipped into, and, and, and this is the guy, by the way, that put replay, and he was responsible for the whole thing in 99, but once we headed back in that direction, it's just like we're trying to make everything perfect and we're trying to fix everything and use every bit of technology to change the game. and. And we're not going to get there. And I think it's it's just like every other thing. When you look at saying it seems so simple to put a chip in a football, you know. Well, but then the other parts get involved in it. And I, I think it's just 
where do we stop? Well, this I mean, is still a game played by humans and officiated by humans. But you're and also, I'd like to see it somewhat. Stay you're that also way. talking about in a way, Mike, that that I think have, but why a lot of fans of so-called Deflate Gate or Ball Gazi have had enough, because we are talking many times, as you know, Dean, parsing things down to, well, did a helmet hit the shoulder, or was it a shoulder against a shoulder? Did a helmet hit the chest? Was it the crown of the helmet? Was it just the face mask? And people, fans are just so sick and tired of the parsing that now in this Deflate Gate, we are now parsing air. Yeah. Literally spending time talking about air and parsing things down to a PSI. And yeah. it's just driving people. We, we, nuts. Were just, we were talking in the trailer there, we were talking about what might be reviewable next year in replay. Mm -hmm. You know, might there be some fouls that become reviewable, like pass interference, for example? And, you know, because I say it's the most punitive foul that you have in the book because it might be 40 yards or 50 yards sure but I, I hope we don't see it because it's going to change the standard of what of what pass interference is you know we call them as officiating lingo sure, bang, bang. bang bangs you know where it happens almost at the same time but then when you slow it down the contact occurs that the ball is that far away from the receiver's hands you could right. never see it with the naked eye so now does replay change that and make it pass interference. You know, I, 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 you know, I just, I think you have to be, where, where we are, we're all, we're all reactionary. We reaction to, we take strong reaction to one thing that happens, whether it's the right. Des Bryant catch or no catch. And the immediate thing we want to do is change the rule. But, you know, well, that Mike does Holmgren. Act, that does actually have to Mike, happen. Mike Holmgren Mike. is the one that used to say in the committee, we're not going to change the rule based on one play because there's other ramifications that come into play. And I, and I think the committee's been pretty good to that, and I know that he. Oh yeah, that's got to change. Strong. We've already been through this. You, you, Dean, and 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 Mike. I've already been through this with you guys, but that that rule does have to change. It's uh, the see it was the tuck rule before. Now it's going to be the control and two feet down. I got to get to this Eisen. poll question to stop overpaying for razors with so much shave technology. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors and grooming supplies right to my door for a couple of bucks. Shave time, shave money. Upgrade to DollarShaveClub.com. That's DollarShaveClub.com. Uh, Chris Brockman, the poll question current. The best Cali. Western film of all time. Current audience, Tombstone, 42%. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Who's going to be somebody's Huckleberry this Sunday, essentially, is what you're saying. Exactly. I had no idea. Thanks for coming, Dean. You're welcome. Hopefully you have an uneventful week, but we know that's not going to happen, <laughs> do we? I'll, I'll take an uneventful post-Super Bowl. That's what I'm uh, looking for. Okay, very good. And, yeah. Mike, thanks for coming in again, as always. You got that's it. That's Mike Pereira and Dean Blandino, the former and current head of NFL ref. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.